I'm Chuck Cowley, Provost of Cropa University, and today we are going to discuss a throttle cable failure emergency. On February 10th, Platinum CSIP Brian Teresi had a throttle cable fail. At a recent CPPP, I had a conversation with Brian. What follows is Brian's description of the event. Well, the problem began approximately 10 minutes after takeoff. The plan on that particular morning with my student was to go out and climb up to 2,500 feet, level off, and start working on some maneuvers. It was when the level off occurred at 2,500 feet, again, about 10 minutes into the flight, that the problem began. It actually began uneventfully, where the student was planning to pull the throttle back to cruise power setting, and he couldn't get it there. The first thing he did was he turned to me and said, did you do that? And of course, I didn't recognize that there was a problem at all until I looked down and grabbed the throttle myself and realized that it wasn't going to move beyond about halfway down to where we wanted it to be. Then I knew we had a problem. At that point, some further action was obviously going to be needed. It actually was kind of surreal because once it happened, I recognized right away that although there was a problem, the engine was still running. I quickly made an assessment as to how much power we had running. And when I knew we had a full complement of what we needed, it was not much reaction time at all. I just sprung in and started to do what came natural. And that was doing a couple of things. First of all, we needed to quickly assess what we were going to do and how we were going to manage this. Uh, it immediately became recognizable that a return to the airport would be the appropriate thing to do. And I was about, maybe at this point, 12 to 15 miles away from the airport. The second was to decide how we're going to manage the power. The good news, we had more power than we needed. The bad news is we were going to have to figure out a way to bring this thing back to the ground with less power. The POH, under the emergency procedures section, actually publishes a technique for doing this, but I'm not sure if this is relevant to all of the SR series, because in reviewing this in retrospect, I recognized later on that this was a much easier procedure to accomplish in the SR-20 than the SR-22. The POH for the SR-22 merely says, when you think you have the runway made, to pull the mixture control to idle cutoff and land with no power whatsoever. I didn't think that was the best option in my airplane for a couple of reasons. The first one was I was landing back at a towered airport where there's airliner traffic that comes in there on a regular basis, and I didn't want to have a disabled aircraft on the runway unless it was absolutely necessary. So the checklist procedure was simply to pull the power uh, and cutting off the engine. My procedure was to begin to use the mixture control as a power management tool. Well, over the course of the last 20 years, um, I became very keen to the process that there's two things that we as pilots don't get taught very well, but there are two very critical things to uh, perhaps saving our lives some days. The first one is we definitely don't learn enough about weather and the second one is we don't learn enough about engine management. So I took it upon myself about 15 years ago to take a three-day engine management course where I learned how the mixture control really can be a power lever control when you're operating in Lena Peak operations. And that sprung to um, the front of my mind immediately when this happened. Once we turned around and worked our way back to the airport, to manage the landing, I was uh, fiddling with the mixture control to see what position I needed to have it in for what power I wanted. Because first of all, we had to descend from 2,500 feet down to pattern altitude, which at our airport is about 1,000 feet. And so with very, very small increments of the mixture control, I could almost manage the power as if I had a workable throttle. Once I got on the downwind, it became very obvious that I could get whatever power setting I wanted simply by pulling the mixture back either further for a little bit less power or advancing it a little bit for a bit more. It was on the base leg that things became a little bit more challenging because 
In order to pull the power back to the desired level I wanted, the engine, as you might expect, started to run relatively rough. But I didn't care about that because if it ran too rough, I could immediately inch it back about a quarter of an inch and get power back to the point where it wasn't running rough anymore. On final, I just kept that particular power setting right through the touchdown. And amazingly, when I touched down on the runway, I probably did not use more than about 200 feet more runway than I would with a normal landing. Well, my advice to other pilots is that this is not obviously a very commonly encountered procedure, but it is part of our emergency procedures that should be in our repertoire to practice every now and then. Because this one could easily be turned into a panic situation where somebody would do the wrong thing at the wrong time with perhaps a much worse outcome. In fact, I even toyed with the idea of whether this was really an emergency at all, which in fact it was. And in fact, on the way back to the airport, the controllers ask, do you want us to roll out the equipment? And without even uh, thinking about it, I just said, yeah, that would be a good idea, just to be on the safe side. But in fact, at no time that I really felt that this flight was in peril in any way. And once we put it down on the runway, believe it or not, we were able to taxi with partial power right up to the maintenance facility where literally within 10 minutes they diagnosed the problem. They popped the cowl off and they immediately saw that the throttle cable had slipped out of its sleeve and got stuck on the baffling in the back of the engine. So for pilots that want to practice this moving forward, I think it's an easy procedure to do with your instructor. I think this is a good example of how all of us are, as pilots need to think of what-if scenarios. This is one that is not routinely practiced in our emergency procedures, but is one that can easily be handled as almost a non-emergency unless you fall into the situation where the throttle cable is stuck with too little power. And that one, I think, is pretty simple. If you can't get to the airport, you just pull the caps. I'm Brian Teresi. I hope this presentation helped. We'll see you on the forums, or better yet, at the next CPPP.